Hey, what's up? Pizza Loving Nerd here. Bola was able to ship a Bola phone to the US for me. So, this video I'm going to be doing an unboxing and a first impressions video. No, this is not a review because I want to spend more time with the phone before I do a full review of the Bola phone. So, let's jump into it. Let's first start with the unboxing experience. I mean, it is an unboxing video after all. The cardboard box that ships with the Volaphone is an English manual, which is actually a useful manual, and I actually referred to it several times when using it. So, don't throw this one away like you throw most manuals away. And then you also have the box with the phone itself. The front of the box says, I believe, have fun in German, or at least, I think it does. And they recently started taking German on Duolingo, and I still can't read or write it without help from Linmob. Anyways, inside the box, we got the phone itself, obviously, in a little plastic bag. Then under that, we have a Hide Me VPN code. Don't bother trying this. I'm already using it. Then we got a German manual, a case for the Volvo phone, which is a pretty decent case. Much better quality than the similar one I got with my OnePlus 7T. This crappy piece of garbage. And then under that, we have a European power brick and a USB-C cable. The phone itself is very beautiful. I did get the white model because the black model was sold out at the time I tried to get it, but personally I think the white model looks really good. I was a bit worried that it would be a fingerprint magnet, but my Space Gray OnePlus 7T collects more fingerprints than the Volvo phone does. The phone has a glass screen with metal sides and a plastic back, and it's about as tall as the Pine phone, although the screen is a little bit bigger than the Pine phone because the bezels are smaller, which means there's more screen real estate. Speaking of the Pine Phone, it's also around the same thickness as the Pine Phone, so it is a thick boy. However, the back of the phone also curves, which makes it a little bit easier to hold in the hand than the Pine Phone. The screen on it is okay. It's a pretty good looking screen in terms of the pixel density. You can't really see each individual pixel. However, it is an IPS display instead of an OLED one, which is pretty unfortunate because Vula OS would look beautiful on an OLED screen. The viewing angles on it are very good, however, it is a little bit less bright than most other phones I've tried, so a little bit harder to see outside. Now let's talk about the software. Out of the box, the Vola phone runs Vola OS. This is actually an Android-based OS that is designed to be minimalistic and privacy-friendly. It uses a custom launcher called Vola Launcher, and I quite like it. When you hit the home button, it takes you to the springboard, which lets you easily type a message to people from the home screen, or you can use it to search the web really quickly. Make a swipe to the left to see your apps, and make another swipe to the left to choose your news channels, your theme, and some other settings including shortcuts. Speaking of news channels, the little red button on the right is your shortcuts button. Using this, you can do stuff like read the news, quickly get to a contact, stuff like that. And sometimes it will launch an extra page on the home screen that you can access by swiping right from the springboard. I really like the news reader on this, it's nice having an RSS reader built right into your home screen. Vola OS is cool, but I'm not going to go into the full details of every little crevice I like and every crevice I dislike on Vola OS. I'm going to do that in my full review in a couple of weeks after I use it for a while. But Vola OS is not why I got this phone. And Vola OS is also most likely not why you are watching this video because the Vola phone has the ability to run Ubuntu Touch and Sailfish OS. There is also a post-market OS port coming up for it, although that port is not nearly as finished and is still very work in progress. Switching between OS's with the Vola phone is very easy thanks to the Ubuntu Touch installer. In the installer, you can choose between Ubuntu Touch, Sailfish OS, and Vola OS, and easily install it just by following what it tells you to do. I love how easy it is to switch operating systems on this. I still prefer the PinePhone's approach to where you put an operating system on an SD card and just plug it in, or you use jump drive. However, for an Android phone, the Vola phone is by far the easiest Android phone for switching OS's so far. Because for all the other Android phones that Ubuntu Touch supports, it only supports Ubuntu Touch, whereas the Ubuntu Touch installer on the Vola phone also lets you flash Android back onto it, and lets you flash Sailfish. It would be cool to see EOS running on this device, which should be pretty easy because EOS already supports the Gigaset DS290, which is the phone that the Volvo phone is heavily based on. Other than that though, the Ubuntu Touch installer on the Volvo phone is absolute perfection. 
and that is easily the best part of the Volophone in my eyes. Now the Ubuntu Touch and Sailfish ports are using something called Halium. This is basically a library that takes the drivers for Android and lets Ubuntu Touch use them in order to quickly get functions working. What Helium essentially is, is it's kind of a library that kind of takes Android's drivers and lets you use them on other non-Android based OS's like Ubuntu Touch. This is how Ubuntu Touch is able to port to so many different Android phones. Thanks to Halium, Ubuntu Touch on the Volophone is on par with other Ubuntu Touch ports to older Android devices like the OnePlus One and the Nexus 5, and in terms of the amount of features that already work, it even beats phones like the Pine Phone and the Libra 5. I mean, to be fair, this is cheating a little bit because, you know, using a library that takes all of Android's drivers and lets them use them in your OS makes it a lot easier to get a fully functioning port compared to trying to add everything in the mainline Linux like the iPhone developers are doing. And many hardcore Linux users would prefer a phone like the Pinephone and Librem 5 that runs pure mainline Linux and not a Halium port of something. But because of Halium, it is fully, almost 100% supported by every feature that Ubuntu Touch supports. And it's cool to see a brand new phone that can run Ubuntu Touch almost perfectly. So yeah, tell me what you think of the Volphone in the comments below. And that's today's video. I will have a full review of the Volphone out in around two weeks because I wanted to play with it a little bit more before I did the full review, so I just went over its hardware a little bit. And the reason I'm going to do a review of the Volphone and not something like the Pine Phone is because the Volphone is marketing itself as daily driver ready, and in my opinion, it is daily driver ready, whereas the Pine Phone is more of a developer device and is not daily driver ready. So therefore, I don't think the Pine Phone's ready to be reviewed yet, and I am going to wait to do a review on the Pine Phone until Pine64 themselves says that it's daily driver ready. So yeah. Anyways, if you're still here, check out my Patreon and thanks to patrons Arya Scripsguard, Pete Neustray, Jim Peter, Sam Covet, Mitchell Vantino, and that's it. This was a very expensive purchase, so help me get more hardware with a Patreon contribution. Thank you and bye.